It's a game, and games have winners and losers. Fallout New Vegas is an amazing and expansive game that, like its predecessor, has more options, avenues, nooks and crannies than most people can keep track of. However, as incredible and vast as the Mojave Wasteland is, what defines and drives your gameplay experience the most is how you build your character. As an RPG, everything that happens in New Vegas is first governed by statistics like your special qualities, skill levels, and damage threshold. Because Fallout New Vegas more so plays by the rules of an RPG than a first-person shooter, properly building your character is the first and most critical thing you do in the game. The main idea of this guide is to inform you of some of the most advantageous ways to build your character and be as powerful as possible by the time you reach the maximum level of 30. From the very beginning, Fallout New Vegas handles character creation and statistics very differently from its predecessor Fallout 3. Instead of allowing you to become a pseudo-god by the end of the game, Fallout New Vegas focuses on creating a character with a specific playstyle in mind. Even through meticulous maximizing and searching for items, the best character build possible in the base game has around 6 or 7 of the 13 skill sets not maxed. This means that if you don't have a good idea of what you want your avatar to be from the beginning, you'll end up with some rather lackluster results. During character creation, the first thing you have to decide is how to distribute your special attributes. These seven governing elements affect your character's skills, the perks you can choose at level up, and various other abilities. In order to build a powerful character, the best idea is to take the five special points you are given and put them all into intelligence. Doing this means that by level 30, you'll have spent 487 skill points instead of 363. That's a difference of 72 additional skill points, which is nothing to sneeze at. Well, we know your vitals are good, but that don't mean them bullets didn't leave you nuttered and a bighorn are dropping. What do you say you take a seat in my couch and we go through a couple of questions? See if your dogs are still barking. After distributing your special points, Doc Mitchell will ask you a series of questions to help you choose your tag skills. There are 13 skill sets in the game, and they all fall under three categories primary, support, and secondary. Even though you can choose any combination of skills, it's in your best interests to choose one out of each category. The skills in the primary category are all combat-oriented, consisting of guns, energy weapons, unarmed, melee, and explosives. Unarmed and melee may seem like good ideas, but they aren't worth much unless you intend on explicitly avoiding trigger action. By all means, choose them if you're role-playing, but otherwise, they would be best to overlook. There's also explosives, which can work well, but it's more of a forethought to combat. It's unlikely you'll find yourself relying on explosives as your primary means of attack. While explosives can be very useful, it's really something to focus on more if you intend to kill people by setting traps and scoring preemptive strikes. Or maybe placing live grenades on people. The second of your two best primary skill choices is energy weapons. Laser, plasma, and flame-based weapons are all very powerful options, but you have to keep in mind that finding batteries and fuel for these weapons can be very difficult. There's also the additional fact that it's easy to burn through batteries very fast. If you decide to rely on energy weapons, just remember that accuracy matters more than shot count. Finally, there's the gun skill, which is really your best choice. The majority of the armaments you find in the game are governed by the gun skill, and there's also ample supply of bullets for these weapons. As a result, you'll never have much trouble finding ammo to shoot the traditional guns. Next up are the support skills, which are all about somehow aiding your combat efforts. The skills consist of medicine, survival, sneak, and repair. Medicine increases the potency of stim packs, which is how you heal yourself whenever you really need it. Survival, while being almost necessary in hardcore mode, is just like medicine, but instead, it increases the healing potency of food items you consume instead of stim packs, then their sneak, 
which helps you in combat by helping you stay out of combat. When sneaking, if you're undetected, you can land critical sneak attacks to score devastating and often fatal damage. This effectively allows you to end battles before they even begin. Repair is the last support skill, and truthfully, the most useful. All of the gear in Fallout breaks down over time, so you have to maintain it by pulling parts off of other items of the same model. What the repair skill determines is whether you'll salvage enough parts to repair a lot of degradation, or just a little. The third category, secondary, consists of barter, speech, lockpick, and science. All these skills function completely independent of combat, and focus on attaining things when talking with a gun muzzle doesn't work. Barter should be self-explanatory. The higher your barter skill, the less items cost when you buy them, and the more you can sell items for. It's not a bad choice, but with how much you'll likely pick up and sell in the game, it may not be worth your time. The real reason this skill would be worth it is how it's the second most seen option whenever you can talk your way out of things. However, speech trumps barter for being used in getting whatever you want easy, which is all good and well, but some people prefer to negotiate with shrapnel over words. The last two skills are lockpick and science, which are similar to each other. Lockpick simply allows you to pick the lock of any door or container with a chunk of metal that has an attached tumbler set in your way while science allows you to hack into computers to do things from turning on or off turrets or retrieving sensitive files. Both are useful skills that only have noticeable bonuses whenever you reach pro efficiencies of 25, 50, 75, and 100. When choosing between the two though, keep in mind you'll run into more troublesome locks in your travels than you will problematic computers. Before I turn you loose, I need one more thing from you. I got a form for you to fill out so I can get a sense of your medical history. Just a formality. With your special points distributed and your preferred skills tagged, Doc Mitchell will ask for one last thing before seeing you out, which is to choose up to two traits. Traits are character elements that return from the original Fallout games and give you powerful gameplay bonuses at a penalty. You can choose to omit traits from your character build altogether, but honestly, they should always be considered. All of the traits are self-explanatory, but three stand out for certain reasons. First is Built to Destroy. This trait gives you a 3% boost to your critical chance, but at the cost of a 15% faster wear rate on your weapons. This may seem like a bad trait, but if you recruit the companion Raoul the Ghoul who has a perk called Regular Maintenance, your weapons will degrade 50% slower. Also, if you pick up the perk Jury Rigging at level 14, which allows you to repair items with relatively similar models, you can easily counter the negative effects without Raoul. The second trait is Four Eyes, which essentially makes any glasses you wear give you plus two perception, and you can find a pair of glasses on the desk behind Doc Mitchell whenever you wake up. The downside is how this trait actually damages your perception by one, which bars you from grabbing some of the better perks in the game. Herein lies the largest problem with the trait. You can cancel out the negative effects though by first setting your charisma to 4 and perception to 6 during character creation, then purchase an implant from the New Vegas clinic later which increases your perception by 1 point. Doing this means you nullify the negative effect and can grab the possible perks that need high perception, while also reaping the rewards of having higher perception from glasses. The third trait is Small Frame, which grants a bonus of plus one agility, but at the penalty of being 25% more likely to be crippled. This can be countered by choosing the Adamantium Skeleton perk as early as level 14. Just keep in mind that if you're playing in hardcore mode, that this trait makes the game much harder until you can counteract it. Special points distributed, three skills tagged, and two or less traits chosen, you've built your character and are ready to step out into the wasteland for an incredible adventure. There are only two things left to mention when making your character. The first, and most important, is to take the educated perk whenever you reach level 4. If you take this perk, you gain two extra skill points to distribute whenever you level up, and if you take it at level 4, then you'll have distributed 52 more points by level 30. Then there's the comprehension perk, which should be taken after educated, preferably at level 6. This perk increases the number of permanent skill points you gain from skill books. Doing this is a bit of a debate though, because it involves having to track down all 52 of the skill books in the game. 
The end benefit is 208 more skill points distributed evenly on your character build, but you have to decide whether or not to go through the trouble of tracking down all of the reading material. Simply put, if you're a perfectionist, take the comprehension perk and track down all of the skill books. If you just want to play the game, you should probably skip this perk. Now, there's only one final caveat to talk about, which consists of some of the finer points for creating the most powerful character possible. As stated, your special points determine a lot of things about your character. The trouble is, once you've set your specials, that's it. You can't change them. There is one single way to improve your Persona specials, though. Far to the north, not far from New Vegas, there's a medical clinic where you can purchase implants that, among other things, augment your special attributes. These upgrades increase how hard you hit, how much damage you can take, and increase your special points. The implants aren't cheap though, ranging from 4,000 to 8,000 caps, but they're well worth it. You can purchase as many implants as you have base endurance, capping out at 9. To clarify, boosting your endurance with things like chemicals or clothing will not increase the number of times you can go under the knife. If you want the most implants possible while also utilizing the advice in this guide, use the intense training perk at level 2 to increase your endurance to 6. Additionally, I should mention that buying the endurance implant does not increase the number of surgeries you can undergo. Okay, so by now a lot of information has been covered. Here's a condensed review to clarify. When distributing your special points, place your intelligence at 10. If you decide to take the four eyes trait, lower charisma to 4 and raise perception to 6. When choosing which skills to tag, take one from each of the three categories, primary, support, and secondary. Primary consisting of guns, energy weapons, unarmed, melee, and explosives, with the gun skill being the best choice. Support consists of medicine, survival, repair, and sneak, where repair is the best option, but survival is the best choice if you're playing on hardcore mode. Secondary is made of the skills barter, speech, lockpick, and science, lockpick being your best choice. When choosing traits, the three best options are four eyes, built to destroy, and small frame. Keeping in mind that each trait has negative effects that need to be countered, and the methods of doing so were covered in detail earlier. Once you start playing the game, take the intense training perk at level 2 to raise your endurance so you can buy more implants at the New Vegas Clinic. At level 4, take the educated perk to increase the number of skill points you can earn. And finally, take the comprehension perk at level 6 if you intend to track down the 52 skill books in the game, which is advisable but entirely up to you. Ultimately, how you build your character entirely falls to personal discretion, but the advice given in this guide can help you to create a much more powerful avatar. In the end, if you follow the advice here by raising your intelligence to 10, taking the educated perk, the comprehension perk, and tracking down all of the skill books, you'll have increased your skills by 332 more points than if you hadn't followed the advice in this guide at all. Even though creating a powerful character isn't easy in Fallout New Vegas, it doesn't mean you can't excel at how you like to play the game. What else did you want to know?